Hi guys, welcome back to Mr. Moose Models. Uh, today is going to be a quick kit review video, uh, well quick, uh, probably about 20 minutes-ish, give or takes. Uh, and what I'm going to be reviewing today is the um, kit that I'm going to be entering into the RVF uh, 100 SIG that's running on Floyd Models website. Uh, and for this, I have announced it already, but I've chosen this kit here, the uh, 172 scale Tamiya uh, de Halloran Mosquito Fighter Bomber Mark 6, Night Fire to Mark 2. Um, I'm going to be building this out of the box apart from uh, some decals which I'll show you later on. Uh, so what I think we're going to do now is get the camera pointed down at the bench uh, and we'll go through the kit, uh, the instructions following sort of the usual format, instructions, decals, kit uh, and then I'll come back and let you know what I think about it. So guys, I'm going to let you into a little secret. I've already filmed this um, part of the video once already but my camera kind of died halfway through it so um, I'm shooting it all over again. Anyway, um, here we go. Um, so the Tamiya 172 scale De Halloran Mosquito Fighter Bomber Mark 6 Night Fighter Mark 2. Um, it is um, a bit of a, a generic box art. We've got a completed kit which has been painted up um, and all of the completed kit does look nice. I find it more inspiring to see like an Airfits esque or Hazagawa esque sort of fighting scene or f aircraft flying doing what it's supposed to. Do. Anyway, um, kit number for this one is number 47. We've got a wingspan of 129mm and a fuselage length of 175mm. It goes on to tell us that this is part of the 172 scale Warbird collection um, here. Um, also, it goes on to say that cement and paint not included, yada yada yada. On the sides of the box, on this side, we have got, once again, more photos of the completed build. Same again, completed build with just a kit number. The other end is exactly the same. And on the last side, we've got some detail shots, and we've got the paint callouts. All in Tamiya paint, so aerosols here, and also your normal sort of acrylics here. So, when you open the box, we get the instructions, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And then we get clear sprue, and we get a total of one, two, three, four, five plastic sprues, which we'll go through in a second. I'm going to start with the instructions here. So, to me, instructions with on the front of it a bit of history about the aircraft. Got the decals here, which we'll keep for in a bit. So, quite funny how the way these instructions are laid out and the fact that you kind of start in one corner, work your way through. So, it's going to require me to do a bit of folding here and there and everywhere, but we'll try and stay on top of it if we can. There we go. Right. So, first page, bit of health and safety, blah, blah, blah. Um, listing the three variants which we've got here, so uh, A, B and C. Uh, so, two uh, Mark 6 fighter bombers and one Mark 2 night fighter. First step unusually is to start with the aircraft uh, engines, where it's normally start with the cockpit, so that's a bit different. Uh, then we go on to doing some work on the wings, and we need to be careful here because we've got different call outs already for different options. Going on to assembly the wings here, and then start work on the port landing gear. Need to be careful here, I think, on assembly because you're going to lose some tread detail if you end up with sense seam at the sanding. Uh, however, the actual uh, landing gear looks very nicely detailed out of the box, so that's good. Step five, we're working on starboard landing gear, so more of the same. Uh, then we come on to putting landing gear into the wings, uh, into the engine nacelles, and then we've got some work on ordnance, so bombs here, rockets on steps seven and nine, seven and eight. Steps nine, we start to work on the interior details, so we're doing the uh, instrument panel with the variants depending on whether we've got fighter bomber or whether we've got um, night fighter with the radar. Uh, then we go on to assembling the cockpit in a bit more detail. Steps 11, cockpit comes all together now and we'll assemble it onto the main wing spar. Uh, and then step 12, you're popping the wing spar and cockpit into the fuselage halves with the nose cones here and bringing it all together. Uh, and then step 13, we are looking at the lower fuselage, so nose cone and the cannons here. Um, and then, oh sorry, machine guns, and then cannon bay here, and bomb bay are underneath as well. Steps 14, you're bringing the aircraft all together now uh, by popping it, uh, the wings onto the wing spar, 
uh, and popping in the tail wheel. Step 15 is working on the engines. We've got two types of uh, props here depending on which variant it is. Um, so just check your references if you're not doing out of the box, if you're using aftermath decals, you just need to make sure which one you're using. Step 16 is working on the canopy. And then step 17 is literally putting on lumps and bumps and bringing it all together with the, um, the wing tips here. Um, then a bit of talking about the painting, talking about the standard camouflage colours, which was dark green and ocean grey over medium sea grey. Um, but some aircraft had a monotone of dark sea grey over um, medium sea grey. Uh, and the night fighter mark II is painted either in flat or semi-gloss black. Then we work on looking onto the actual paint call out. So your classical two-tone camouflage over the medium sea grey looking very nice, uh, not so well known or not seen as quite as often should we say um, of dark sea grey over medium sea grey, I think that's quite a nice option and then the night fighter variant here with the radar at the front. So that's for the instructions. So we're going to have a quick look at the decals, uh, I'm going to bring you in a bit closer here for the decals, there we go. So. Decals here um, are looking quite nice. We've got um, try and catch light on them. They don't seem overly thick, which is quite nice because to me, decals generally have a reputation. They're not overly glossy either, which is once again quite nice. You've got some seatbelt harnesses here and an instrument panel uh, decal, so whether you want to use those or not is up to you. The only thing I would say is on the serial numbers here, we've got quite a bit of carrier film on the actual, um, not serial numbers, the um, squadron codes. So, but overall, not too bad. I'm going to just go off on a bit of tangent here. Um, for the upcoming build that I'm going to be doing, so as I say, this is going to be built for the RF 100 anniversary SIG on Floyd models. Uh, I'm not going to be using the kit decals, I'm going to be using some extra decals and the aircraft I'm going to be doing is this one here, so just let me bring you in. And This is uh, a Mark 6 fighter bomber Mosquito from 617 Squadron, so it's got a few slight differences, it's got the invasion stripes underneath um, and it also looks like it's in just medium sea grey and dark green as opposed to ocean grey on the top side, so I need to sort of check my references and see what I can find about that. The decals in themselves, extra decal decals are generally quite nice. Um, I've used a fair few. Um, so from this big sheet here, basically, I'm going to be having the two serial numbers here, the squadron identifier code, um, some roundels and some tail fin flashes. And that's about it. Right, sprues. Just going to back you out a little bit. There we go. Let's start with the wings here. So there we go. Let's try and capture some light. We've got nice details from the uh, from the outset here on the uh, wings. Uh, there's no panel lining seen on these aircraft because they are wooden fabrication, so there's no metal panels or anything like that. But you have got some rather nice details just where there is. Um, some access panels and stuff. So on the undersides of the wings here, I'm guessing those are fuel tanks, they're quite nicely detailed uh, and also got some nice riveting here just around where the engines are or radiators I'm guessing they would be. Second sprue of the big ones, so this is actually sprue A, the one was sprue B, so sprue should have done it in your order. Uh, sprue A we've got the fuselage halves here which are quite nice. Uh, once again, there's no massive amounts of panel lines or anything on them, but there's a nice little sort of detail where it needs to be. The engine cells on your half look very well detailed and very nicely done. So that's quite impressive. And we've also got part of the cockpit here and tail wheel. So, no, nice sprue. No flash, nothing like that. I wouldn't expect any from a Tamiya kit anyway. Sprue C, you got two. Um, you got two matching copies of Spruce C, so we're just going to have a look at the one. Um, and Spruce C here, we've got the two different types of props. Uh, so I'm going to have to check which one I need to use for my aircraft. Um, the wheels, which are nicely detailed, with some nice tread in them. So I just need to be careful about that. I'm just going to try and bring you all the way in. See where we can catch that detail in the light. There we go. So 
just need to be careful when you assemble it so you don't obliterate the detail if you're doing your sanding and um, we'll just bring you back out the landing gear looks very nicely detailed as well for the scale so that is all around very impressive Sprue D here is uh, obviously for this these variants so we've got the uh, the cannons underneath uh, the nose cone and machine guns here and the specific instrument panels and also the radar so I'm assuming what Timmy has got they've got a base mold set and then they've got uh, a modular system to do different variants of the uh, the mosquito but once again nice details not overly done um, no flash nothing like that so all good really last sprue we're going to look at is going to be the transparent parts uh, to do this I'm going to bring back this just to check for distortion so if we're looking through on the top here there's hardly any distortion that we can see just going to zoom right in there we go so there's not much distortion really you can see for that it's nice and clear which for 172 scale is very impressive um, I will be using a mask set on this canopy when I come around to painting it uh, just because I think that's going to be worth spending the extra few pounds to get a mask and set foot um, you'll be able to see nicely into the uh, the cockpit so I might as well make the most of it that is that price right so just going to back this back out what I'm going to do is flip the cameras back round um, face to face and then I'll let you have a uh, I'll just have a bit of chat with you about what I think about the kit and how uh, I intend to build it so um, obviously You'll notice I've changed shirts. The reason being is that I'm filming this a lot later on in the day because I got interrupted and didn't manage to finish off what I was doing earlier. So anyway, um, back to the mozzie. Um, what do I think about it? Well, I paid £14 for this kit uh, from Mike Jolly's Facebook page, Models for Less, um, plus postage. Um, and that was a year or two ago. Um, and I think for £14, it's jolly good value for money, really. Um, I think now you can find them for about 16 or 17 pounds. I've just had a quick look on, on uh, scale mates, and uh, there's a few companies listing on there about 16 17 pound mark. The Airfix 172 scale kit, the equivalent marks of it, it retails for about 12 pounds. Now, that's uh, sorry, that's uh, an old tool kit with raised panel lines, and I think it's got quite a few fit issues. Um, this aircraft, it's a 1999 tooling so it's not brand spanking it's almost 20 years old now uh, but uh, it has got a nice detail it's got the recessed panel lines where required and it's Tamiya so I'm hoping it's going to go together rather nice um, so I, I think it's worth it's worth 14 16 pounds that you'd pay for it um, so it's a bit better I can see what I'm doing now um, yeah, I, I think it's probably quite a good bang for your buck, as you put it. Um, I haven't. I've done a bit of research online on, on various forums. And I haven't heard any horror stories about it saying to be an unbuildable kit or anything like that. So um, yeah, I, I think it'd be interesting. Anyway, um, I will be building this shortly, uh, making a start on it soon. Uh, I did say on my bench update that I wasn't going to do a video build for it, but part of me thinks that I might give it a go. Um, I'm definitely going to be in a, uh, going to be doing a build um, video build series for my Valiant, and I'm going to start building soon. But for this one, I think I, I, I might I might give it a go. We'll see what's what. The jury's out on that. So anyway, long story short, to me is 172 scale De Halavand Mosquito Fighter Bomber Mark Six and Night Fighter Mark Two. Highly recommended from me. Um, we'll see whether I say the same thing at the end of the build. But yeah, looks good. Looking forward to getting stuck into it. And that's it, guys. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. As always, I'm going to say thank you for watching, uh, thank you for the kind comments, uh, those are commenting, thank you for the subscribers as always, and with that, happy modelling guys, we'll see you soon, take care, bye bye.